allow me to draw all the registers here the uh, general purpose ones that we use EAX and EBX ECX and E DX. And when our program starts up, there's going to be whatever random data is in here, but let's just, let's, let's put some legitimate data in. Let's say move EAX1, move EBX2, move ECX3, move EDX4. And the only reason I'm doing that is so we have something besides random leftover data from whatever used the registers before we got here. That's going to change the values, one, two, three, four. Now, I want to write a simple program that will reverse all the values. So EAX will take on EDX's value, and EBX will take on ECX's value, and ECX will take on EBX's uh, old value. Ooh, whoops, this, this needs to be a three here, sorry. Uh, and like so, and then EDX will take on EAX's old value. So we're simply reversing the numbers. Why are we doing this? Absolutely no good reason, except it makes a good exercise. <laughs> okay, that's, that's the only reason we're doing this. It's, it's to expand your mental capacity, which is a good thing. So how are we going to do this? If you look, it, it looks like we took uh, EAX and EDX and we simply swapped their values. This 4 came up here and the 1 went down there. And then same thing with EBX and ECX. The ECX's value came up here and EBX's value came down there. So we could certainly take up another piece of static memory and we can call this T for temp. And then to swap EAX and EDX we would take this 1 that is an EAX put it over here and then we could take the value in EDX this 4 and move it into EAX and then we would have to take this temporary value and move it down here. And that's how you perform a swap. You always need an extra piece of memory to perform a swap because if you just say, hey, move into EAX, EDX's value, then that puts the 4 up here, but then that would erase the 1 and we've lost our 1. we got to put our 1 down there. So we could certainly do that swap with EAX and EDX and then with EBX and ECX. That's one approach for sure, but the approach I want to use in this video is the stack simply because it's it's a good exercise, all right? So first thing I'm going to do is push all of these values onto the stack. So EAX, push EBX, push ECX, push EDX. And hopefully you're noticing that with the swap technique, we only took up one four-byte chunk of memory. And with this one, we're taking up one, two, three, four, so 16 bytes total. We're using the stack. So this takes up more memory. But again, the purpose of this video is just to exercise your memory in Stackville. So let's say this is the stack. I'm going to push EAX, so that'll push the value 1 onto the stack. And then we push EBX, that'll be a 2. CX will be a 3. DX will be a 4. I'm not sure why I feel obligated to outline these, but I will. Okay, and I'll just say A, B, C, D. And you can see just by writing the corresponding register names out here. I've already I've already reversed the order here. You see the 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4. So now that all is all now the all, now all that is left <laughs> is to pop these values in the appropriate registers. And so we need to <clears throat> pop these values in the registers that we we want to pop them in. So we want this 4 to go into EAX. So pop into EAX. And can you see the pattern? We need this 3 to go into EBX. So pop EBX, pop ECX, pop EDX, and we're done. Okay, that, that'll reverse all the registers. Now generally, we use the stack quite often, and we'll see this in future videos. We use the stack to save registers away temporarily so that we can restore them when we're done. We do that a lot in functions. Uh, and so what we will do is pop in reverse order that we push. But here, we're pushing EAX, EBX, ECX, EDX. And then we pop in the exact same order that we push. So e or A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D. And the LIFO structure of the stack, the LIFO behavior of the stack, will naturally reverse the values for this for us. So let's actually watch this execute. Let's get the 
Oh wow, lots of lots of goodies here. Let me get rid of this. And it's so good that you understand the call instruction. Now I'm going to F11 into it. And we have our registers here. You see there's just kind of random values here. And then we're going to put 1, 2, 3, 4 into it. So F11, 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 F11. We now have 1, 2, 3, 4. And now we're going to push, but we need the stack. So I'm going to grab the stack pointer here. Copy that. 0x, control V. Here is our stack. The top of the stack is currently right here. So when we push, we're going to change these values out here that have been abandoned. Okay, somebody else used these before, but now it's our turn to use that memory. So watch, we're going to push EAX, so we'll see the stack go one, two, three, four. It'll go one, two, three, four. Watch, F11, 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 F11. There we go, there's the one, two, three, four, and now the pops. Watch EAX, EBX, ECX, EDX. We go one, two, three, four downwards now. We're going to change it to one, two, three, four upwards. So four, three, two, one, and we're done. And I think in my, our original code, I just have to point this out because you understand uh, procedures now. I forgot to put a return at the end, which means we're just going to run off the end of the function and execute whatever if I don't have that return. That is bad malformed code. But hopefully that was a good useful exercise for you. Uh, a little bit more of appropriate place that we do that is reversing strings. Okay, strings of letters like my name. I'll just put in comments here. My name, Jamie. If I wanted to reverse that, I could push, 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 push. And then I would pop and pop in that exact same order and I would get E-I-M-A-J like so and then there you go that's that's called reversing character strings we haven't talked about character strings we will in a future video not too far out from here